Okay, so good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the HEADS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our 2022 Best Practices Showcase, celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Inmaris, and I will be introducing the speakers for this breakout session of this room. Before we begin, we request your support with the following. Please change your mobile phone to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded. And for those who, are, who will join us virtually, please remain muted. This presentation will be in English. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. And finally, we invite you to see the QR code that the staff will share to all participants to complete the electronic evaluation form for this session before you leave the room. For those who join us virtually, the links to the evaluation will be available at the chat. I'll make sure to post it a few times at the end. Please make sure you select the time and date for this session. This is the 11.30 session for February 4th. Your feedback and recommendations are very important to HEX. Now we're ready to start. The title of this presentation is Ensuring Writing Success for Hispanic Doctoral Students. Uh, please welcome our speakers, Dr. Amanda Jeff, Just, see, I was gonna mess it up, Just, and Dr. Diana Valle Riestra. Uh, the presentation will be virtual. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Amanda Just, and I am the director of the Graduate Student Research Center at the Albizu University Miami campus. And with me today is my colleague, Dr. Diana Valleriestra, and I am the project director for the Title V PPOHA grant. And today we're going to be talking about how we ensured writing success for Hispanic doctoral students, especially while we were working with them virtually. Before we actually begin getting into the data that we collected on Hispanic students' writing support, um, I want to introduce you and give you an overview of the Title V PPOHA graduate grant. Next slide, please. So the Title V Promoting Post-Baccalaureate Opportunities for Hispanic Americans, or PPOHA, is a grant program that was awarded to Albizu University Miami campus in October of 2019 by the Office of Post-Secondary Education. This is a five-year grant, federal grant, that focuses primarily on two initiatives. One initiative that focuses on graduate programs and faculty development, and the other initiative which focuses on improving graduate student support. Next slide, please. In addition to the two grant initiatives, there are also two overarching goals that are outlined in the grant. One goal focuses on increasing our enrollment of graduate students in our master's and doctoral programs. And the other goal is increasing the earning of graduate degrees. And both of these goals are currently aligned with the university's strategic plan. And finally, the grant outlines a total of three objectives over the five year span of the grant. Each objective, if you read them here on your slide, one focuses specifically on enrollment, the other on completion rate, and finally, the third objective focuses on degrees. Each objective has a series of measurable outcomes or specific tasks that must be completed by year. So for example, in year one, there were 10 measurable outcomes that the team had to monitor and meet. And then in the year that we just closed out, year two, there were nine measurable outcomes. We are currently in the third year of the grant. Next slide, please. And then just to share with you some of our external evaluation results, how did we do at the end of year two with this particular grant? As you can see um, in objective number one, which is the objective that focuses on the increasing the enrollment of graduate students, we met and exceeded that objective 
689 graduate students enroll and our target was 666. In terms of objective number two, which focused on increasing completion rates, we also met and exceeded this objective. We had a completion rate in year two of 62% and our target was 37.2%. And objective three was the only objective that we fell short of, which focused on increasing the number of degrees awarded. There were a total of 175 degrees that were awarded to graduate students on the Miami campus and our target for year two was 183. And this is a little bit um, of information concerning Albizu University. Um, Albizu University is a four-year private nonprofit institution of higher education. It has two main campuses in Puerto Rico, one in San Juan and the other one in Mayaguez. And then the Miami campus is considered a branch campus. The institution was founded in 1966 and the grant where this work is, um, where Dr. Just is gonna highlight the work that she did under this grant, um, this grant was specifically awarded to AU Miami campus. Our institution promotes professional preparation and connections primarily in the fields of psychology, human services and speech language pathology. And if you look at the demographics of our graduate students, Predominantly 85% of our graduate students report being Hispanic or Latino, 83% female. The majority at 79% are working professionals and 25.8% report um, high financial needs, so high poverty. And we have seen a trend in enrollment of our graduate students. Our trend seems to be that over the past five years, there has been an increase in our graduate enrollment. And now Dr. Just will go ahead and talk more specifically about the student support that was provided under the initiative that she, um, that she takes the lead on, which is initiative two. Thank you so much. So um, I am, uh, like I said, I'm the director of the Graduate Student Research Center, and I came on um, in January of 2020. So I only had three months of being on campus before we had to go virtual. And part of the goal of the Graduate Student Research Center is to give um, research and writing support to all graduate students, but there definitely was a highlight on helping those students um, write dissertations because obviously that um, aligns with retention and completion rates of the university. So, during the beginning of when I started in this position, I talked to the academic program directors um, and we have two different programs at the Albizu Miami campus that serve doctoral students. That's the PsyD program, that's a clinical psychology program. And then we have a human services PhD program. And what I wanted to find out was what were the needs of their students? And these were the main challenges that they shared that their students were English as second language learners. They were struggling with summarizing information. They struggled with their grammar and paper organization was also a big problem. So we had to come up with a plan as to what we were going to do to address the needs of these students. So the students were referred by the program directors to the Graduate Student Research Center for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, for workshops, and for resources. And in those resources, we have a Blackboard shell that gives all kinds of information about their program, about writing, writing strategies, dissertation strategies, things like that. So what we did is we had a pilot student. She was the first student that came for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions from the PhD program. She was a PhD candidate in human services. And together we had a total of eight tutoring sessions covering some of the following topics. Her chapter one, organizing it into a way that kind of funneled down into a specific topic. Her chapter two, again, making sure that that was organized and that she had APA formatting correct. And then her institutional review board, IRB, which is the process in which um, students have to go through before they can conduct any research on human subjects. And so that includes things like creating a consent form for participants, 
uh, making sure that your instrumentation is okay, and then also filling out the online application. And then I also help this student, or we help the student with a colloquium presentation, which is also sometimes called the proposal, where she went and presented to her committee, her chapters one and two. So from this pilot, what we came to find out is that we discovered a process for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, and that was established for our center. So first we have a preliminary meeting with the student to identify her challenge, any challenges. Then we send, then we have that student send the initial draft for review. And then detailed feedback is provided on that initial draft. Now, when I'm discussing detailed feedback, I'm not discussing um, changes, small changes to grammar or adding commas or really fixing a lot of APA formatting. Instead, this feedback is given to the student to make them think. Um, you know, maybe did you think about incorporating this topic? Or how did you get from this transition from this paragraph to this paragraph? Um, how could we maybe get make that transition a little bit smoother to the reader? That's the type of feedback that was given to the student. Then we would schedule a meeting via Zoom where we could go over and discuss more in depth that detailed feedback that was provided. And that kind of helped the student guide this, guide the direction of the paper. And a lot of that discussion also was. Uh, it became uh, talk aloud strategies where the student like discussed what they wanted to write about. So that helped them do a lot of the pre-writing phase. So afterwards, we took detailed notes of the session on our Survey Monkey survey. So that way we recorded what was going on in each session. Um, you know, what, what were the students' main challenges? Did the student bring anything in um, to show? All of that was recorded. And then if there was a follow up meeting that needed to be scheduled, we would schedule that before the meeting was over. Another outcome of this pilot is we also found that there was a deficit in knowledge of the IRB in the student body. Uh, so an additional workshop was developed and piloted for incoming PhD students. So we used four main types of technology um, when we were working with students success in writing dissertations. So first we used Zoom to meet with the students, have these one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. We used Grammarly, where we gave students free access to use this on their Word documents. So it actually was correcting them as they were typing. We used SurveyMonkey, like I said, we, had, we developed a survey in which we collected all of the data from each session. So that way you could really look at trends across different students or even just one student. And then lastly, we used a program called Smartsheet, which is an online virtual interface that mirrors something like Excel. And that will talk, go a little bit more into detail later about how we use that to communicate with the program directors and the dissertation chairs, um, the, the status of the students and the progress they were making along the way. So first we're gonna talk about some lessons that we learned while using Zoom with graduate students. So one thing that I found very quickly is that we have to send the link at least 24 hours before. It's actually even better to send the link closer to the date so the students don't lose it in their email. Another thing is that students need the link, the Zoom link sent in an email because we found most students did not use calendar invites. They got very confused by that. So it always be an email with the Zoom link in it. Another thing that a lesson that was learned is to always enable the waiting room. And the reason for this is that that way students know that you haven't entered the room. And so that way they don't log in. It's an empty Zoom room. And then they log out thinking maybe they came at the wrong time. And so this just leads to um, students not leaving or missing meetings because they're not sure if they got something wrong with the time. And then if you have students who have recurring meetings, which was very common for our center, uh, we were encouraged to use the same link to avoid confusion. So you can actually, you see right there on the screenshot, I have uh, a screenshot of where it says recurring meeting at the top. You can check that. And that keeps the same Zoom link and the same password for every single uh, session you have. And that's just easier. They only have to worry about one email to save and they can just go back to that. So how did we use Zoom for editing dissertations specifically and what lessons were learned? 
Uh, so one thing that was learned very quickly is that the student needs to share their screen, not the other way around. The tutor shouldn't be bringing it up and going through and making docu making um, you know track changes or anything on the document. The students really need to take the lead in that, otherwise they'll just sit there and they're not as engaged. So this keeps them engaged in the Zoom session. And it also allows them to take the lead and encourage some sort of leadership and a sense of ownership of their work. Uh, the other thing is to start with the initial problem area first. Uh, avoid wasting times on parts that are finalized. And this may require asking the students, uh, what parts did your chair say were good? Or what parts have they reviewed? Uh, what parts haven't they reviewed? Did they tell you there was a certain area that you need to work on? Uh, the worst thing that you want to happen is to spend an entire hour session with a student and then find out that the chair had already said that that section you worked on was done. Uh, so it kind of does, it's keeping you away from the real problem that the student was having. And then it's also important to develop a system to identify changes. So for example, maybe the student wants to use track changes or use highlighting like is shown on the screen right now. That's an example of highlighting or maybe they want to change the text to a different color. Whatever the system is, it needs to be developed in that first meeting that you have with the student. You say, okay, well, if that's what you want to change, why don't you make a note now? How would you like to make that note? And then they can make the choice to whatever works best for them. And then it also helps you because you know that that student will be highlighting areas that they need to change. So when you're reviewing it again, you can see if everything had been changed or addressed already. The other thing we did, like I said, is we used a lot of talk aloud. So we'd have the students read paragraphs out loud and then discuss meaning and clarity. So during this part, this was a discussion. Uh, this was asking, what do you want the reader to take away from this? Sometimes it was, this is what I'm understanding from this. Is that what you're meaning to convey? And that was a very effective strategy because that talking aloud process really helped that student to develop the paragraphs that they were working on that maybe weren't so clear. So the next program that we used is Grammarly. Um, so Grammarly is an excellent tool for um, the English language when you're writing in English. Uh, we sent each graduate student a link to register for a free full version. So we actually purchased it as an institution. If your institution uh, doesn't have the money, there is just a free uh, version that students can use. It isn't as comprehensive, but it is there. And then there's also um, another website that's called HemingwayApp.com. That's a free uh, like online editor where students can copy and paste their information into their paper into a document and it it acts exactly the same as Grammarly. So if you don't have the means to purchase that for your institution, there are workarounds for that. So all of the student, all of the graduate students had access to Grammarly. And this full version of Grammarly includes uh, a web browser. So say when you're writing an email, it's going to pop up. And it also includes the Microsoft Word plugin. So as they're typing a document, um, it's going to automatically pop up. And I have an example here on the screen where you can see what exactly Grammarly does. It has this window that comes out that actually points to things that it thinks that you should change. And it is actually color coded. So there are some things that it will say are suggestions and then some things like a spelling error that would be incorrect. And so I just gave an example here. The example I'm showing is the web browser extension. This was done in an email. Um, and this really, the students said it saved them so much time. I can say from seeing the students work before and after, it definitely saved us a lot of time on, on our side because the students' documents were already cleaned up before they were even coming to a session. So there were not a lot of grammatical mistakes that were really keeping the reader away from understanding the material. Now let's talk a little bit about SurveyMonkey and how we use that to track the student process. So we created an online survey for the tutor to fill out after each session. And this identified what were the student challenges. Um, it looked at trends in the areas that students were struggling. It wrote notes for follow-up meetings. Um, that's a really easy way to keep organized without having to take a lot of notes on paper. 
And it was an easy way to keep all of the students' email addresses because then we would contact them to ask for their feedback and if they were satisfied with the services that they were receiving. Um, now, personally, I've used uh, several different online survey websites uh, and the university pays for SurveyMonkey. I find it to be a very fairly easy you know, interface to use. It's very user-friendly. It does produce reports, although I have to say that in some cases, I do have to end up tweaking the reports or taking that data from a .csv file and kind of working it into a way that would make sense for me. Um, however, you can get a free version of SurveyMonkey as well that will produce some reports with like obviously a little bit more limited than the paid version. So if you're looking for something that's user friendly to track something like this, I do recommend it. And then the last um, technology that we use is Smartsheet. So like I said, this really looks like an Excel sheet, but it is all online. So you log into Smartsheet and you, this sheet can be shared with anybody in our organization. So as you can see on the screen, this is just an example of our student A. This was all, these were all the notes that I was making about what she was completing, the progress, where she was at in completing those tasks, all of our meeting dates, and then actual notes there for the chair. So this is shared with all of their dissertation chairs it's updated in real time. So if they ever want to say, I wonder if that student has met with the Graduate Student Research Center, they just have to open this up and they can see every single time that we've met with that student. And there's no emailing back and forth, an Excel sheet, constant updating. Everything is just in real time. Um, another thing that I really like about Smartsheet is that you can upload documents for reference. So there is a row that you can't see on this um, image. However, on the left-hand side, you can actually upload a document. So say that the student had completed something, you could actually upload it there. Um, and then whoever you shared it with could see what you had completed during that, that session. You can also easily generate reports from the data. It takes a little bit more of a skill set. Um, however, you can actually take everything that's here and put it into a really nice dashboard, which I'll show you an example at the end of what we did with that. Um, and also, you know, because you're sharing with somebody, you can change the level of access that they have. So the chair and committee members could comment or write notes if they wanted to communicate with the tutor. Um, and like I said, I think if you have a basic knowledge of Excel and you're able to use that program, uh, I definitely think you could use Smartsheet. It's fairly easy and the sharing process is very easy because they just have to click the link and open it. So whoever you're sharing it with doesn't even need to be that familiar with Excel, which is also a great perk of this program. So the preliminary findings of everything that we implemented is that we had um, 21 students from both doctoral programs combined attended one-on-one -on -one sessions and a total of 67 one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions were conducted or held. And that's about an average of three sessions per student. And we we're very happy to report that student A, who was the pilot, graduated in December 2021, which was a huge accomplishment for her because she was way behind and way past due for graduation. Um, so it was really great that we were able to get her within a year to write the dissertation, defend and graduate. Also, we had some really great feedback from both of the students and the academic program directors. The students told us that they were really satisfied with the services they were getting. The Graduate Student Research Center was actually voted the most useful campus resource in the fall. And students said that they felt more organized. They had a sense of direction. They felt less overwhelmed by the whole process, which can be very overwhelming. And a lot of them said that they wish that they would have had the services sooner, um, which is why we're now trying to target students as they're coming into these programs so that they know this is available to them from the start. And the academic program directors noted a lot of positive changes. They said that the writing and organization was really improved and that it was much easier than to read through and give meaningful feedback without getting stuck on a lot of grammatical errors or organizational errors that could have been solved before it got to them. So 
So in terms of next steps, uh, we took what information was from uh, this uh, pilot study and the initial study of working with all of these graduate students writing dissertations and all of the lessons learned and decided to create an online dissertation bootcamp for doctoral level students to address the common challenges. So after kind of looking through all of that data, the common challenges were summarizing literature, um, really making sure that they're not just using the same sentence structure, this article said this, this article said this, this article said this, but rather actually saying it as a whole and explaining that in a way that's meaningful and in their own words. And then also creating an outline for their introduction and literature review. Uh, there's a lot of pre-writing steps that were missing with the students. And when they were coming to tutoring, that's where the majority of the time was falling was in this pre-writing. We're creating an outline. What do you want to talk about? What are the trends in the literature that you feel you need to include in your dissertation? And then common APA mistakes. Uh, now that usually was the last thing we would address in tutoring sessions once you've sort of cleaned up the document. However, there were some mistakes that we saw over and over and over. So that would be included in this online dissertation bootcamp. Okay, so uh, that concludes this part of the presentation. Um, but I would like to share with you real quick before we open it up for questions. Um, like I said, I wanted to show you the Smartsheet report and then I also show you some of the reports you can generate with SurveyMonkey. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So this is the back end of the SurveyMonkey website. And as you can see, all of that information about student challenges that we wrote it actually auto populates a word cloud. And this is really cool because you can actually customize this word cloud. Um, and it's really helpful if you just want to look very quickly to see what our students really look like needing help with when they're coming to sessions. And then also they have it auto populates these charts. Like I said, you don't have to do anything. It automatically does this and you can download these as images. So it's really easy to navigate and work with SurveyMonkey uh, without really having to have any knowledge about, um, you know, research or collecting frequencies of data or anything like that. The other thing I wanted to show you as an example, this is what a report in Smartsheet would look like. So as you can see, what we were looking at in this specific report was what, was what were the human services PhD students looking at in tutoring sessions versus what were the PsyD students really needing help with in tutoring sessions. And so we took the, the data from what the sheet that I showed you in the image where I shared with the dissertation chair. And then we really found that, as you can see in both programs, most of the students were having trouble with their chapter one, which at our university includes the introduction and the literature review. So like I said, this is not as user friendly to create these reports on Smartsheet. However, if you do feel really comfortable with technology, it creates really nice reports. They're useful, they're very easy to share. And again, they update in real time with whatever data is in the sheet that you have. So now that concludes our presentation. We'll open it up for any questions. Okay, so here virtual, oh, uh, uh, our classroom, we have one question. Go on ahead. Yes, it's regarding the, hi, I'm Carlos Crespo from Covime. Hi, Mandy. <laughs> I'm Dr. Vista. Uh, just regarding the, in terms of the uh, uh, tutors, was there a process for selecting them? What's the profile regarding the, the tutors that you have for this? And the also the other question is uh, regarding the, the committee for, for the person. So you, you know that uh, some of these uh, uh, PhD uh, committees for uh, dissertations, did, did, did they give you, uh, can you just uh, elaborate a little bit about their feedback to you regarding the turnaround Turnaround uh, times on the, the number of reviews has has this been re reduced in terms of uh, 
once they enter this process that you guys are, are performing? Yeah, I can answer both of your questions. So in terms of tutors, right now the Graduate Student Research Center only has one um, because of our budget restrictions. However, we did have a very rigorous interview. Um, you know, obviously we're looking more for somebody that has a doctoral level degree so that they know what they're looking at in terms of dissertations. Um, and then also we work very collaboratively with the Office of Student Affairs. And so they have also a very rigorous process to choose their tutors to make sure they're meeting the needs of the student. And they have uh, two, about two, I think, tutors that focus just on graduate level students. So I've actually been working with them as well so that we can spread the work around and all kind of doing generally the same thing when we're um, going through and working with the students. Now, in terms of the committee and the turnaround time, yeah, I would say it's everything. Every time I even am on campus and pass somebody in the hallway that's a chair or a committee member, they have nothing but good things to say. They're like, wow, you know, I can't believe I, we, we had done all this work and then, you know, now it's finally starting to look like a real paper. We can review it and give feedback like this is great. Um, so I think in terms of turnaround, yeah, even though they haven't directly said it, I know that the feedback that they're giving now is a lot more targeted and it's a lot, it's a lot less time on their part because they're not having to review for so many grammatical errors or any of those other APA errors because it's already been fixed by the time it, it gets to them. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any and questions? Really, if I can oh. add, I'm sorry, if I can add, oh, no. um, I think the advantage of having a grant such as this Title V is that we can really provide an additional layer of support, in this case, to graduate students, in addition to the support that they get from their committee members, their editors, and so forth. You know, and what Dr. Just highlighted, how she works so closely with the Office of Student Affairs, that's, you know, the other thing we have tried very strategically to do, to really coordinate our student success efforts um, so that it is a more comprehensive approach to providing services. So she works, you know, very closely with um, and is understanding of what services are going on in Office of Student Affairs. So instead of being in isolation, we coordinate everything through that office as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other virtual questions? You can either type them out on the chat or uh, just turn on your mic. In the meantime, I will be posting on the chat our survey. Oh, okay. To make sure uh, that everyone fills it out before leaving the session. This is our 1130 session for February uh, 4th. If there are no further questions, I will stop the recording. Thank you so much, Dr. Diana and Amanda just fixed it. Uh <laughs>